uh, I shall discuss how Western LNG, a project that will develop a large volume of gas in Western Province, is contributing to the next phase of development of PNG's LNG sector. Uh, I shall also touch on an important theme of this session of the conference, the challenge faced by PNG to, safe, uh, to satisfy domestic demand for power. In this talk, I'd like to cover four key points where LNG, Western LNG sits in relation to other projects in the PNG LNG sector, that the large gas and condensate resource in Western Province that our project seeks to commercialise has been well defined by drilling um, with much of the resource risk removed, that our project team has come up with a design concept for a mid-scale 1.5 million tonne per annum LNG development scheme which will be reliable and minimises complexity and risk. And finally, that Western LNG has the potential to, develop, to deliver significant benefits to the community, uh, to Western Province and to the state. Oops. Now, PNG possesses a number of key attributes that make it an, an attractive destination for petroleum investment. The company is rich in natural resources. Successive governments have gained a track record of supporting resource development and the acid test of any investment destination. All the banks in the region lend money into the jurisdiction. This map shows the locations of the highly successful PNG LNG project Peter's just referred to, uh, which is producing over 8 million tonnes per annum of LNG. The, um, the other project that you've heard Peter talk about and others this morning, Papua LNG, Triceratops or and so on. And as we come over here to the, to the west, this whole area here, south of more or less south of the CPIC, is called Western Province. And this is, our, this is where our project is located. It's located in the, in the Foreland Basin. Uh, and what our project involves is the aggregation of four field groups. The Stanley Field here, the Elevala and Ketu Fields here, the Ubuntu Field, and the Puk Puk Douglas Fields and bringing these fields down via a 500 kilometre export pipelines to a liquefaction facility located near Daru Island. <coughs> I've also put on this map the location of what Kumul Petroleum called the Western Pipeline. It's this blue line here. And this is a in effect an alternative uh, to our proposal. Um, it involves bringing gas in a common carrier line down to Kopi and then bringing it into some sort of a, an energy hub. Now, we've been supporting um, Kumul in that exercise. Um, but uh, I think uh, we, we, we certainly would consider delivering our gas and oil to that project, but only when its viability is established and commercial terms and timeline are acceptable. Until those conditions are met, our obligation to the PNG government all, and all the other <coughs> stakeholders is to progress the project we can deliver on, Western LNG. And I think, as you would expect, we will not be deflected from that objective without having a, a high level of certainty in, in, in an, an altern alternative plan. Now, this expanded map will give you a better view of the four field groups that will comprise the aggregation. Um, as I said before, the, the Stanley field, the uh, Elevala Ketu fields in PRL, 2021, the Ubuntu field in um, PRL 2028, and the Puk Puk and Douglas fields in, in um, 
Imperial 40. The gas resources in these fields are hosted in uncomplicated structures with highly productive sandstone reservoirs. The northern fields are rich in valuable condensate and LPG. And the terrain in this foreland area is relatively flat and accessible, certainly in comparison to that of the fold belt gas fields to the north. <coughs> now, this gives you a view of the, the ownership of the resources that, that we intend to develop. The appraised resource is a material one. The proved and probable contingent resources, or as we call them the 2C resources, are between two and two and a half TCF of gas with 60 to 70 million barrels of condensate. And incidentally, the condensate assays like a quality crude oil. Mm -hmm. It's often the case that gas projects involving the aggreg aggregation of multiple fields in a number of licences with different operators is, is difficult. However, in the case of this aggregation, the, the aggregation that will feed Western LNG, as you can see from the pie chart on the right, sorry, on your, on your right, two companies, Horizon Oil and our partner Repsol, own about 70% of the total resource. And between them, we operate all the four licences involved. This should facilitate greatly the unitisation discussions required to, to, to bring about the aggregation. And you can see from the pie chart on the left side that the, the, the bulk of the reserves lie in three licences, which again will minimise the number of people sitting around the negotiating table. <coughs> now, I do apologise a little bit for the somewhat technical nature of, of, of this slide, but it's, it, I think it's important to demonstrate how these fields come together. The produc production profile on the top right shows how in the foundation phase, Elevala, Ketu, Stanley and Ubuntu in the blue, um, red and green, um, these are the fields with the richest li liquids content, how these are produced at a daily volume that will support a 1.5 million tonne per annum LNG sales capacity system. Later in the project life, as these fields go into decline, Puk Puk and Douglas will be brought online. The result is a, is a, pro, is a, <coughs> is a project life of over 20 years on a 2C basis. Now, I'll just make a comment here that although the numbers you heard in the previous talk of resources are quite large, the, relatively speaking, 2TCF and the associated oil is a smaller volume. But it's still a large project. It's still a project that will generate over a billion dollars a year in revenues for at least 20 years with quite abundant <coughs> expansion capacity. And I think as Peter said, it's, it's important to us and to all of our stakeholders, including the government, that we get these reserves into production, that we don't wait interminably to, to put them at the tail end of someone else's project. The schematic on your left shows how the foundation fields are brought together to a northern processing hub uh, for separation of the gas from the condensate. At this point, in two lines covering roughly 500 kilometres, they'll go to a um, LNG facility to be located somewhere near, near Daru Island. Later in the field life, Puk Puk Douglas, these other fields and possibly other surrounding fields will, will be brought in to, 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 to backfill the initial production. Um, these, are, these are dry gas fields and that's what gives the project a long life. This is what I, I talked about, this as being the 2C reserve, reserve volume. What we, the, this, is, this chart here shows the, what we call the 1C, the proven contingent resource volume. That alone goes for 15 years. And that's what we like to see in, when we design a, a project that we can get at least 15 years out of the proven resource. 
Most importantly, on this schematic, you'll see there are at least four offtake points uh, for gas sales to the domestic market. And this is a very important part of our, our pro project. Um, because apart from a small amount of intermittent hydropower in Western Province, the bulk of power generation is fired by imported diesel. The penetration of electrification for community and local industrial users in the province is non-existent. And I believe our project can make good inroads to turn that around along its very long length, over 500 kilometres. Now, when we worked on selecting the development concept for this project, um, we considered the three main aspects. We're currently in the pre, what we call pre front end engineering and design, pre feed stage of the project. We've got quality contractors working on, on the main elements which you can see there, the upstream processing plant, the gas and condensate export pipelines, and the modular liquefaction facility located near shore Daru Island. Um, our philosophy in selecting the development concept is that it should be standalone, so we don't have to rely on others. Right sized for our gas resource, and low risk from a technical and execution perspective. And, and in the main, we've tried to maximise the use of standard proven technology. We believe the system will be a reliable one with uptime of over 90%. Much of the upstream gas processing plant and the LNG facility will be built in yards and floated in, minimising building in the field. Having said that, we intend to maximise the use of PNG contractors and workers during the construction and operating phases of the project. This was our policy certainly during our drilling phase, our extensive drilling phase, and it worked very well for us. It, it's the responsible thing to do and it, it just makes good business sense. Now, in terms of markets based on research by Wood Mackenzie and others, we expect to see a strong increase in demand for LNG in these areas, the Indonesian, whoops, the Indonesian archipelago, the countries uh, Malaysia, Vietnam, uh, Singapore, and so on, surrounding the site, South China Sea rim. Uh, these are for, these markets are forecast to grow at about 12 percent per annum, and of course, the China and India markets. Will uh, are forecast to grow at six percent, probably quite a lot higher than that. And those markets will, both of those markets will, by 2035, according to forecasts, be approximately the size of the markets today in Japan and Korea, two of the, the today's LNG giants. We expect the LNG market to tighten significantly from about 2023, the anticipated start-up time for Western LNG. Of course, on this map, as you can see, uh, Daru well located to supply all of those markets. Now, finally, on this in this presentation I've touched on some of the important benefits that Western LNG stands to deliver to multiple stakeholders. It's a project with a long life, with expansion potential, and this will create long-term employment and economic opportunities in the province it will generate significant tax revenue for the state. As I've said, the key philosophy <coughs> is to make gas available at multiple outlets, as well as LPG and condensate at the LNG plant, available for domestic use. This will benefit communities and local businesses. It will also reduce reliance on costly importation of these commodities, currently burning up hard currency reserves. Most importantly, we expect our presence in the region has the potential to lift standards of health and education. This is a conscious objective of our board and management, and we've already started work on it. In large part, because of its remoteness and lack of infrastructure, the people of Western Province suffer 
distressing rates of infant mortality, about 15 times worse than in Australia, um, and maternal mortality 40 times, probably quite a bit higher than that, than the rates in, in this country. We've teamed up with two very fine organisations, Australian Doctors International and Mercy Works, and Horizon Oil supports their efforts to tackle these issues in Western Province with money and logistical help. We admire their dedication and what they're achieving and we're proud to be involved with them. Finally, in conclusion, the resource base that will feed Western LNG is well defined and with the gas fields largely owned and operated by two companies, should be able to be aggregated without difficulty. Pre-feed work on a reliable, low-risk design concept is progressing nicely. The project is targeting completion around 2023, about the time that, at which demand for new LNG supplies is forecast to strongly increase. And Western LNG has the potential to, to deliver substantial benefits to communities and industries in Western Province and Papua New Guinea. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.